is one story that I heard in 1985 in the winter. One friend of mine had one cassette tape. He said that one man in Finland had told one story to him. And I had much respect for this friend of mine. And for him to tell me this story was what it was. I listened to this cassette many, many, many times of one friend of mine from Middle Europe who was telling the saga, who had learned it from this man from Finland. This family that this story comes from is one, the oldest family on the planet, according to my understanding. They're called the Bock, B-O-C-K, the Bock family. And this Bock family, they live in Helsinki, Finland. The whole family is gone now. The last member of this family, Eeyore Bock. Eeyore was born in Helsinki, Finland, January 17, 1942. And from the age of seven to the age of 27, his mother, Rhea Bockstrom, and his sister, Raquel Bockstrom, these two women, they gave my friend one story, one saga called the Bach Saga, passed down in only one family on this planet. And until 1984, it had never come out of this family. They had kept it from the beginning. The story is one story, it's one his story. It's one saga called the Bach Saga. The story is based in one root language, one first language on this planet. It is also a mythology, or what they call one mythology. It's called the Vine and Monin mythology. It is the oldest mythology on the planet. coming to an island called Susisari. And the old name for Susisari was called Udin's, uh, Udin's Island, the Sun Island. This name here is put here by the Catholics, which means Wolf Island. Backwards, Susi, Isus, Jesus, the island of Isus. And hell, or what we call Helsinki today, the new name for hell, destroyed by the Catholics in 1050. And the year 1550, they rebuilt it and called it Helsinki Forest or Helsinki. But the original name for Helsinki was called Hell or Helstan Udenmaf. In Hell, Helsinki, there's seven hills which had seven temples. And out a few kilometers in front of Helsinki, there's seven islands. So this island that we're about to go to here is the true North Pole from before ice times. It is the, the top of the axle as it stood straight up before the ice came on the planet when we tilted. This is Udin's Earth, the island of Udin, the Sun Island. In Finnish language, this is called Pihanma, Holy Land. Okay, and they talk about one place called Valhalla. Valhalla, yes, the island Nordic. It's Nordic, but it's also Finnish because they have Valhalla restaurant here somewhere. On this yes, side. Yeah. It's, it's... But the true Valhalla is straight down from this. Ooh, when Aaron Spare so built this, there was one castle here before. That's exciting. It's like a ghost story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not such a ghost story. It's, yeah, I don't know if you ever heard of somebody called Eeyore Bach. Yes, I know. Because yeah. he used to work as a tour guide. Yes, we know. His family kept one oral story yeah. about this. You know, the Finnish people really don't know where they come from. Yes. Well, he was very Con excited about like Finnish prehistory that yeah. year ago, yes. and mm -hmm. he yeah. made this kind of excavation. I was I was there from the beginning. The Lemminkainen Temple in Akintasaranta. Yes, I, I know that story. It's a very famous story. It's a big story. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> story. Anyway, we need to make I, the, the museum. I just need to make one small for the video in this room here. Okay, let's go do this room let's here. Go. We're standing in one island called Susi Sari. And Susi means wolf, and Sari means island. 
but before 1050, the name of this island was called Udin's Ur. And Udin had won a ring, Udin is everything. Udin has always been, and Udin will always be, and Udin is the sun. So before the Catholics came here in 1050, this was called the Sun Island. They made it to be the Wolf Island. Straight below me here, standing in this room, is the exact point of the axle as it is tilted. It is the old North Pole. A long time ago, the pole was sitting straight up like this. It wasn't tilted. And if you went to the very top of the axis, the pole, the E, there was one hole which is straight down below me in the granite. Still today, there is one hole. And this hole is what we call the Valhalla. Above this hole was one gate called Valhalla Val. You'll find this picture on two rune stones from Gautland. What we know in the English and the rest of the planet is the gate to heaven, as, this, as it was until 1050 when the Catholics broke it to pieces. Standing on this point right here, being the very top of the axle, the very north pole, there came one line that went this way over the planet, went down through Crete, around to Hawaii, and this way, another line going this way through Russia, around the planet this way. So we're sitting in the, what we would call the original meridian line, or meridian line in English. There's four lines that go around the planet, divide the planet into four hemispheres. And we're standing right now where these four corners of the world meet. If you go straight down from me, there is this hole where the meridian line began, going around. So if I turn myself like this, I'm facing this way. I can put one foot here, straight, and one foot here. And my right foot is in West, in the Europe, the Western Europe. My left leg is standing in the East. So the division between east and west is one line that goes from here around this planet. This was the old zero line. In 1675, the zero line was moved in one map situation. The, the Dutch created one map making one new zero line. And in the 19th, 18th century, I think, they moved this line to Greenwich in London. So they make that the zero line today, where this is the true zero line of the planet here. So we're actually, the whole planet is one hour off what we should be. It should be here, the zero line. And straight down from me here is one hole in the granite. Today it's covered with one wooden floor, but if you were to take the wooden floor up in the basement of this museum, there would be one that's been covered over, but there but they built, the Catholics built some kind of story over this hole in the top of the axle. But if you looked inside, you take an excavation, you can find what we call a group or one hole in the very top of the planet, in the very top of the E. We also call this axis one E. And the dot above the I or the E is the North Star. So if you go straight up from here, you would come to the North Star. It's the Pole Star. And this hole in the top of the E is the hole, and the E is the E. It's the word of the word holy. And if you come from this point right here, 125 kilometers, and you turn this radius into one circle, you will make one ringland at the very top of the North Pole. And this ringland, its name is Udin Ma. Udin is the sun. Ma is the land. It was called the sun land because the sun was making a 24-hour golden ring around this island in what we call the paradise time before the planet shifted over. In the Bach Saga, we explain about a time before the ice on the planet, what we call the paradis, the paradis or par paradise in English. And I guess there's not so much more to say about this room except that if we went straight down from here, this is what in the Norse mythology, what they call Valhalla. This is one Val, one wall.
and below is one hall, one hole. And law means all means everything. Law means the law. So in this story, it said that all the soul and all the spirit, when we died, went back into this hole when we were sitting straight up and down. And now we'll go outside and I'll give a little expect a story about this hill at this most holy of places. This Udinma, the hole in the top of the E, and the land around this is called the Holy Land. In root language is called Hell League. Hell League. Hell League. Hell League Ground. Hell League Ground. And Fan language in Finnish is called Piha Ma. Piha means holy, Ma means the land, so this is the Holy Land. This is the original Holy Land. Israel is not the Holy Land. There's no hole in the top of the E in Israel. The story got changed in the history. So we're standing exactly in the middle of the true Holy Land. We're standing here on the island of Uden. And in the paradise time, there was one ringland here called Uden Ma. If you still go to Helsinki, you can ask anybody where Uden Ma is and they'll say you're standing in Uden Ma. So it's still one name that they, they know about today. Around Uden Ma were six more ringlands. I think I know five of them. Towards Estonia was Esten Ma. Towards Russia, Cuman Ma. Hammond Ma, Levin Ma, Turin Ma towards Turku. Anyway, six ringlands around one, seven ringlands at the very top of the planet. And out from these seven ringlands, this whole planet was divided into 250 kilometer ringlands, more than 2,000 ringlands. And in each of these ringlands, we're living three classes of people, Jarlar, Karlar, and Trailar. Jarl, Karl, and Trail. Jarl in English is the Earl, Car is the gentry or crofter, the middle class, and trail we would call the surf. So we had three classes of people. This hill that we're standing on now, going like this, in the Finnish language we call it Kun Telavori. Kun Telavori. And Ku is the moon, Tel means to tell, and Vori means mountain. So it's the mountain where you tell about the moon. And the root language is called Lus Nar Beria. Lus means to listen. Nar are the information people in the second family of this story. The Nars, they're taking out the information. They're the narrators, the narrators. And Bore means mountain. Lus Nar Beria. Beria means mountain. So in English, we call it the Nars listening mountain. Where we're standing now, in the paradise was called the arena and arena is one place where these nars these information people from the rousette they came and they stood here and behind you about where this bushes are they built one big fire and these nars in the very top of this hill i'll come to that when we get there was the king and these nars would scream questions across this fire to this Ra to this king. There was a tower behind this place called Glance Him, which was one tower looking down on this Valhalla Valve, looking down on the gate to heaven. So the whole concept of the All Father at the top, looking down on the top of the planet, it comes from this island here. It's not really somebody living in space out there who's looking down. It was at the very top of the axle, there was a tower called Glance Him. Glans means shimmering, hem means home. It was one tower covered in gold, so you could only like glance. And in the top of this tower was the All Father of the planet. In the Van, we call him Ukko. In the root language, we call him Gube. In English, we call him Pear. We're all sons and all daughters of Pear. We're Pear sons. He's our parent. We come from his sperma. So Pear went to father. And standing in the top, Sitting in the top of this tower was one small niche where the All Father of the planet could sit down and look to the gate of heaven. Because this is what we would call the gateway to heaven. It's called Valhalla Val. At the base of this hill was his son, 
Ra, the king, what we call Kuning As in Bon language. Ku is the moon. As are the As peoples, the As that represents the moon. Kun in the root language and king or Ra. This information system was where these Nars could scream questions to the Ra. Ra would turn around and scream the question up to his father in the tower above heaven, above this Valhalla. The All Father would hear the question. He would stand at the top of the planet like this, a living human being, not one. And in this, he would sit and think about this. He would, what we call Kela, he would think very deeply about this question. When he had the answer, he threw the question back to his son, Ra. And Ra threw the question, the answer back to the Nars down here so they could hear what the All Father and this Ra in one parliamentary system. These Nars would now go out via to these ring lands, one Nar to each ring land, taking the program that pair or tour. Pair is also tour. Ra is the king and the Nars are the Nars. So the Nar, Ra, tour, and tour standing like this in one T. And these Nars would take this program out to the middle class of people called car people. And these car people had something called one Rasti. And Rasti is a ring with an even cross in the middle, just like for this place where we are right now. It's the center of the planet, and these meridian lines go out and make one cross at the North Pole. And in this ring, three box, three goats would come out, and they would give the performance the pair had, had said to give to them. The pair, for men say, for the men they say pair, in what they call forstelling in root language. And these three characters dressed in bok and goat suits, they would come out and give the information to the people. They would give it to the car people and they would act out what tour had to say. So they were car act tours. They were cars acting tour and tour was giving them the program from this top of this, a little bit how this language works inside this saga. So this is the arena. And now we'll walk up this Lisnar Berry, this Kun Talavori, this Nars Listening Hill, and we'll walk up to the top and give one's, one's story from up there. So we're standing here at the grave of Augustus Ironsford. He was responsible for the building of this whole seven islands, this whole fort, Suomelina. And this was where the Ra the king, he would stand. Where these bushes are here, it's where the fire was burning. And on the other side was where the Nars were standing, throwing the questions very loudly across the fire. So Ra could hear. And he was again throwing the answer, the question back up to the All Father who's standing in this tower above the end of this museum today, straight above the hole in the top of it, the axle of the planet, the true or the original North Pole. And this was the information system where the Nars were listening on this mountain to what the king and the All Father gave to the men because the men got it from the Ra and from the All Father. The women got it from Akka, the high woman, and her daughter Maya, the sister. So there's another construction somewhere around here where the, the women had their story. For every man's story, there's a woman's story. In the mythology, you have God and goddess. In the religion, you only have God. And this is the, this is the mythology of Vainamoni. In the paradise times, we all had family trees. In the paradise, we had the palm tree. After paradise, when the ice came, we had the oak tree. And each family had one tree. It was their family tree. And when this tree, it had a very special meaning in these days. There's two words we have. One is called soul and one is called spirit. They're different. They're not the same. In the story, the name, as you take a breath in and out, you're taking the spirit in and out. In root language, spirit is called ande. And to breathe is called andas. In the Vaughan language, the name for spirit is called Henki, and the name for breath is called Henki Nas. 
So the spirit and the breath has to do with the spirit. The soul which comes from the sun, the soul, the solar, the soul is inside every cell in your body. It is the life force. It's not the spirit. It's different than the spirit. And in the paradise time up until the year 1050, everybody on this planet, when we died, we were burned. And when the fire burned down, in the bottom of the fire was something called ash. And ash is the driest thing on the planet. And the pagan people, the heathen people, the Paakana people, they said that the soul was in the ash. Everything else had burned away, but the soul was contained in the ash. So they collected this ash, and they put it in one bull's ball, one, and they sewed your ash up into this sack. And your soul in the ash was taken to your family tree. We all belong to oak trees, what we call ek. And now your ash, your soul was, they made one hole where they put your ash, your soul, into the roots of the tree, and they covered it back up. So now you have your family tree, that all the people in your family, their ash goes underneath one tree. So when you look at one tree, your grandmother, your grandfather, your older brother, everyone who has died in your family from beginning your family, their ash was put underneath one tree. And in this process, the soul, the life, is sucked through the moisture system, through the damp system, into the root of the tree. Your soul is then becoming into what we would call, in Finnish language, mahala, or mahla they call it, mahala, mahla. In the root language we call it sav, and in English we call it sap. So the soul would go into the sap of the tree, it would rise up the stem, or the, the trunk of the tree, and from there it would go to the branch of the tree, and from the branch it would go to the leaf of the tree. Our life would go to the leaf, and the word life comes from the word leaf. So now our life, our soul, our leaf, is in the leaf. And this time we are, what you could say, you be the leaf. You be the leaf. And that's where the belief system comes from. From the leaf, the sun, which makes the soul, sucks the soul out from this green of the leaf. And now this green, the soul goes back into what we call, in the root language, centrifugal, or English centrifugal force. And all the soul and all the spirit on this planet would go back into the air and spinning around and around when the planet was sitting straight up and down. And it was all brought to this hole and the top of this pole to what we call the holy. So all soul and all spirit from all living things all went to the hole. And this is what they would call the heaven. In Von language they call it Taiwan or Taibas. In root language they call it Himel. In English, we call it heaven. So this is where the true heaven or where our soul went to. The man who's standing in the top, he's called Uko or Vainamonen. He's called Gube or in English, he's called Pear. And he's standing straight over where this soul. He's a young man, he's called Lemminkainen. And Lemminkainen, he's the breeder. And as he's making children with the Yotsin, the Bach and the Swan, Lemminkain and Yosin, he's breathing the air. So the soul and the spirit is going back into these people as they make this story in one ring of soul as we reincarnate back into the human race because all people are coming out from this All Father and this All Mother. This is the very center of hell. This is what we would call Midgard, the garden in the middle. And we're standing on the old Valhalla right here. So there really was an All Father looking down from above the planet, from one golden tower, looking onto the gate of heaven. This is called Valhalla Val. And standing in front is called Ra, or he is also Kuningas in Von language. He's called Heirs in root language. And we would call him the king in English. Kuning As, Ars, and King. And this is a story about how the soul goes back. 
All this was destroyed by the Catholics in 1050. There came 30,000 men from the Vatican who came to Udenma. And they made a ring around Udenma and they came to the middle and they killed all the Finnish people here. And so at this time, the Finnish people, they lost their history. The Finnish people have been here many, 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 many years. But the history, they don't know where they come from, the Finnish people. When the church came here, they destroyed. The Bach family, they ran into exile. One went up to Kayani, and the All Father went up to Korvatuntri. And this was where the Yule Puki or the Santa Claus story comes from, from 1050 to 1250. Maybe we'll save that story for another day. Castle, uh, Middle Finland. This walls and what we see here is uh, not really real. It's uh, reconstructed in the 1930s. In the middle of this river, there's a granite bedrock, and the true castle is actually another seven meters down from here. Uh, they built one dam in the beginning of the century, last century, uh, to create electricity here, and uh, the water level rose quite a bit. So they had to come up several meters to build what you see here today, which is completely one fake. This is not the real castle whatsoever. The real castle was a place where the king and the queen of Finland, Kuning As, Kuning Atar, they fled from Udenma in the year 1050 when the Catholic Church came up to kill everybody in southern Finland and tried to eliminate this Bach family from the planet. The king and the queen, they escaped. They came up here to about 500 kilometers or so north of where they were uh, in Rasapuri. And here they lived for 250 years as um, hell was burned and uh, South Finland was basically destroyed by the church. Where we stand here uh, is in the middle of the courtyard, about where it was. And in 1250, uh, they made an agreement with Sweden that they could come back down to South Finland uh, if they never said anything about being the king and the queen of Finland. They made an agreement, so they did like that. And when they did so, they buried in this well. There was a well here in the middle of this court. It's about seven meters down. They buried a scepter, a crown, and one golden statue, about 288 kilos of pure gold from before ice time. They buried in an old well here. We took some tests back in the 1990s, one ground radar, to show that there was one metal box down in the ground here, six or seven meters down. So it'd be very nice if we could get uh, the Finnish government or somebody to come and take the crown and the scepter to the king of Finland. This is one of those places where there are artifacts buried here in the Finland that could prove the story that the Bach saga is true. So there was one photo that we saw at Eeyore's funeral back in uh, the 24th of 7. 2011 when we put his ashes in the ground. There was a photo of this small island here where the water level was way down, where they let the water go through and you could actually see the top of the true ruins, which I said was on bedrock. And today we have this beautiful dam here giving power to the people.
standing here into the entrance of the Lemminkainen Temple. This temple is from before ice times. It's from the, what we call the Paradise times. This tall stone that's standing there next to this hill, this hill is one granite hill. It's part of the bedrock. The stone to the right-hand side, this is called sundial rock. And as we go down, we can take a, a more of a photo of it. The trees have covered it up now. But this is put here by human beings. This is not natural. There's three granite stones underneath that it rests on top of the, the granite, or what we call the peruscalio or the urberry. This tall stone, this etitu stone, is not part of the hill. You see this crack that goes down. The stone was put here. And if you look to the texture of the granite in the top of the stone, it's not the same texture as this stone. So this stone doesn't belong to this hill. This is separate from this hill. The stone is where the highest woman on the planet, where she went at the stupa. In English, we call her Ella. In Finnish, we call her Akka. And in root language, we call her Guma. And the place where we are right now is Akan Pezoranta. Akka is the old woman. Peza is one nest. And Ranta means beach. In root language, called Gumbu Strant. Gum is Guma, the old woman. Bu is one nest. And Strand is one beach. So in English, the old woman's beach nest. This whole surrounding is named for the woman. And this is Akka's at the stupa, Guma's at the stupa, Ella's at the stupa. And she fell, when she fell from this stone, making at the stupa, when she fell backwards from this stone, when she lifted her stick up, she fell and she landed on the bedrock in the, in the entrance, in front of the entrance to the Lemminkainen temple. The Akka never went into the temple. Only the men went into this temple. It's the, his story. But the whole outside is named for the woman. This land that we are standing in is one land called Udenma, which I explained about earlier. It's one land that starts from one North Pole point on one island, comes 125 kilometers away. You take this and turn it in one radius and one and you create one ring of land. And this temple here is about 30 kilometers from the North Pole. And the name for this ring land was called Hell before. But Hell wasn't a bad place. Hell was the head, it was the, the center of the whole pagan dome of the planet. In 987, these people, these Oz people, this Bach family, they knew that this Christian church had made two arms. The Roman Catholic was coming up through Europe, coming this way, and the Greek Orthodox were heading towards Russia, this other way, from Constantinople. And they knew that this Christian dome was coming to destroy hell, because they'd already written in their book that hell was the worst place on the planet and that only the bad people go there. So this family, they knew that they had to preserve this. They could not let the church find what was inside this temple, which I will explain later. So they closed it up in 987. And as we go down, I'll explain what they did to close this place up. There were huge granite stones behind me going all the way down. So we had to take these stones away. We blew them away and we took them away. And we start to go down this granite hill. Today it's very muddy, but maybe we have one picture when it's very cleaned out and everything. And now we'll walk down here and we'll see I have what I have to say down here. Uh, in the year 987, they closed this temple up and they said that in 1,000 years, the Bach that was alive at this time, it was his obligation to open this temple. So 1987, a group of us had met in Goa with Eeyore Bach, 
and he told us about this temple and what's inside this temple and its purpose. We all came and we met here in July of 1987 and now we were going to start to dig out and I was given the title of digging master number one because I started the first day to dig on this thing. We worked four years to get to where we are but anyway we'll continue down the mountain and I'll explain what we found and how we found it. The first thing was my good friend Kevin Woods stood on top of the Etta Stupa with one broom and he pushed the broom off and it spun and spun and came down and landed, boom. And that's where the Aka, that's where the Guma, that's where the Ella, where she landed when she went at the stupa. Right where this entrance, this cave entrance is, we start to dig about where the water level is there. You can see the wet level. That was sand up to that level, a little bit higher actually. And we came down from there to just above the entrance to the cave and there we came to three granite slabs completely rectangular stacked on top of each other the picture shows four but there was three and between each granite slab was one layer of like this clay so as we drill the drill into this rock it would go about a meter and a half and then it just woo so the drilling master, Heike Akulin, and he could straight away understand that this granite, completely rectangular granite, inside this natural surrounding, it wasn't natural, it was put there by human beings. We went through three of these stones, and when we came to the last stone, there, there was a stone pushed into the mouth of the cave, completely sealed in with clay, fit exactly in this hole, and there we start to make drilling and about two meters two and a half meters the drill went woo so he could straight away understand that this stone this big big kiwi this big stone that was pushed into the mouth of the cave it wasn't natural either it had clay so we exploded this he drilled we put dynamite and he came and he boom and we blew this first stone out Behind that, we found one other large stone pushed into this mouth. And he drilled that out, he blew, rocks flew across, broke this telephone pole across the street. And now, when these stones were cleared out, behind was just one wall of boulders, different sized boulders, all built in a wall with clay and this stuff they call Rapa Kiwi, which is a, a kind of a small stone that's found only on the surface. It's not found under the ground here in Finland. So these people had actually just packed this cave full of these boulders with this clay, just rock walls. We started the drill exploding, exploding, exploding. And what we noticed in the beginning as we went inside this granite hill the floor continues. It's really one natural granite floor inside here. And we noticed that in the top there was a ceiling. And the ceiling is one granite ceiling continuing down and down and down with all this filler that they fill inside, all these boulders and things they, they pushed inside this cave. The temple itself is inside this hill. This hill is called Ki. Pelevori, which means prick playing hill, but anyway, the temple goes down inside. So now we've blown, I don't know how many meters, we're 30 meters, 40 meters inside this cave, and now we started to take out, going inside, and we should follow that way, and at some time we will come to one golden door. And behind the golden door is Another story which I will give later what's inside this temple as we understand it. I want to make the point that we're not looking for a temple at all. We're not looking. We know where it is. We just want to get to it. This 
level here that you see this light is about level with the road, a little bit below. And this is where the sand, where we started to dig. Eeyore had some plastic buckets and some shovels he had already put here. So on the 19th of July, 1987, I came down here and we started to take some buckets of sand out. The next day I was joined with a friend of mine from Sweden, Eric, Kevin Woods, Akari Newman from Finland, and Cheryl Mele, and another small group of people who had spent time with Eeyore who had heard about what was down inside this. So we, next day we started to excavate the buckets of sand. We came down about three meters and on this wall over here somewhere was one checkerboard, eight squares by five squares. Put there a little crude, but definitely dug into it. Nothing natural with these squares. And they call this one Hell Reestering, five by eight, BC Ud. We called the museum, Musei Viarosta had them come out because when you found some kind of ancient anything, you had to call them to see. They came out, they looked at it, they said it was nothing. So it gave us the permission to go down as we start to excavate this temple from before ice times. We came down and down and down the sand, finally getting some equipment, a little bobcat machine, to start to take the sand up this beautiful Granite Hill, and we came here to just above the level of the entrance, and we came to one granite slab, eight meter by four meter granite rectangular slabs. And as Mr. Hakulin and drill down into the first one, I was standing next to him, and when his drill went about a meter and a half, it just went whoo and the expression on his face, because you, this is not natural, if this is really bedrock, there should be no woo when this drilled. So he drilled again and again, and it kept doing woo woof, just going into something soft underneath this granite stone. And by looking at the rectangular stone, you knew that it was, it's not natural for something like that to be here. So he put dynamite, and we exploded this stone. And underneath it was another one just like it, completely rectangular. It had been put on top with this like clay. They call Rapa Kivi. It's like a clay substance, small stones. So he drilled down again. And boom, another one. And then there was another one, rectangle underneath that. He exploded that, boom. We came down to just in front there. And there he drilled one more time, but it didn't come to the woo. But anyway, we exploded because we didn't know, and we blew a hole in the bedrock in the Peruscalio and the Urberry. So we had that's all filled in with sand right there. But when these three stones were taken out, there was this one large stone just pushed straight into the entrance of the cave. And he drilled through that, and behind that was also woo. So he knew that wasn't natural either. So he put dynamite, blew it out. And behind that was one more stone, almost the same size, on the second big. He drilled through that, and same thing, woo, exploded it out. And then we just came to these walls and walls and walls of rocks set in with this kind of like cement stuff. And we kept blowing a little more and more every summer, 88, 89, 90, until we came down and we start to go this way. We follow a perfect granite ceiling going down, a perfect granite floor going down, and in between is just this stuff full of rock walls. And you can see where it's all settled because you can see the ceiling continuing down. So it's just to continue the ceiling. The ceiling, the proof is in the roof. So if we can just continue the ceiling, 
and follow and take everything out that's not natural, then we'll eventually come to one golden door. And I'll explain what's behind the golden door in another thing later on. It's just to continue taking the stone out. And we don't know how far we have to go. We could be one explosion. We could be one meter. We could be 30 meters. We don't know. The doorway has to be higher than this water, though. So the door must be up in here somewhere. But we're continuing down like this. This whole room is one water lock. Somewhere in front of us is a plug where you can pull one plug in the water as it rains. It just goes out to the sea down the hill. But they put the plug in. When they didn't use the temple, they put the plug in and fill up with water. And when they wanted to use it, they pulled the plug out and this whole thing would just drain out. Today we have to pump it out over the road because we haven't come to this, this plug that's somewhere in front of us. the sundial, what we call the sundial rock. And on this rock was a ring with a pole in the middle of the ring. And when Udin the sun cast the shadow that it was 12 o'clock, Akka would be standing here with her stick facing this way. And at 12 o'clock she could see that it was now 12 o'clock. She would lift her stick straight up to the sun and as she lifted her stick, she couldn't stand anymore. She fell. She could still stand with her stick, but she couldn't walk with the stick. So as she lifted the stick up, she pointed it straight to the sun, to Udin, and she fell straight off the back in front of the door to the Lemminkainen Temple. There was a wooden construction here where they could bring her up to the top. And as she stood there, there were no trees anywhere here. And all the people around, all the Asur of Honor, I guess, Asur people, they could come and they could see the Akka. And this is, this is the, the top of Kipelibori here. This, the temple is straight down inside here. We've done radar machine tests on this mountain. I was here when a Mr. Kopanen did a, a test and I helped him lay the wires out, but we never, we never put the machine on that point there, which is probably just about where we are inside the cave, is just underneath this stone somewhere here. We've gone through the mouth, we've gone to the back of this stone, and now we're coming down inside this hill here. And that's where we were, where we left off in 1990 when everything stopped. <laughs> standing on is called Kupelibori and when we were looking into the entrance to the cave of the temple it's this, the rock on this left hand side this is one granite hill about 80 meters over there is that tall stone called Akka's Ethestupa where Akka where she fell and she could not walk with her stick anymore all these trees here were not on this before. And when they brought the Akka from where she fell, they brought her to this place right here. And there they had one wood for to burn the Akka, the highest mother on the planet. And people, the bay is out there. And there were people in boats, people all in the area to see the Akka. And as they burned, the smoke would come up. So people come from everywhere all over because she was our all mother and they could see the fire the smoke from Akka as she was burned and this is the burning place where they brought Akka from here they took her ash and they carried it over 
to the Snapper Tuna, where we were at the Snapper Tuna Church. And there was one ash tree that was called the Yugdras Hill, which is the world tree of all living things. And there the Akka, her ash with her soul in it, was put underneath this ash tree. Her ash was under the ash tree. And there she went back to Valhalla via this centrifugal, this centrifugal force, as her soul came up to the top of the tree and collected at this island where we were this morning, which is about 30 kilometers or so from here. We're about 30 kilometers, maybe a little bit less from the North Pole right here. But anyway, this is millions, more than a million Akas were burned here. Only she could be burned here and only she could fall off the edge of This is her, her place, Akinpezaranta, Gumbu Strand, the old woman's beach nest. castle on the planet. this Rasapuri Lina. Ra is the king, Ras is the race, and A is in the sperm, Ras A. Lina is the line, the line of the king. Just playing, just playing. Oh, this is a very nice picture. This big tower here is called Ra Bell Tower. And this is the Ayers Tower, or this is the Ayers Tower and my tower. We actually have it, what it used to kind of look like, with the water around it. But it was covered with a white chalk, so it made the reflection of a white castle on top of a rock in the middle of a lake. And this is where the Cinderella, Cinderella story comes from. Ella is another name for the Akka, the high woman on the planet. In English, it's Pear and Ella. In Root, it's Gubma and Gube. In Avan, it's Uko and Akka. So, see in there, there, right there, Ella. There, Ella, Cinderella. Who is the mother of Maya and the mother of Ra. This bedrock that it's sitting on top of it's called one cost. And when you build one construction like this, and the king, he could tell from the cost. So it becomes one cost tell. He cost out, he cost. In Finnish language, cost stay means to baptize. So this castle is not built for fortification, it's built for, it's a baptism. Before the baptism was a different baptism that we know today. It was a water baptism, but it was from the king. And he could cost A, he could cost A, and then you put L on the end of it, it becomes Costel, which we call castle in English. We, we leave the T out and we make it castle, but it's actually Costel. This is the oldest Costel on the planet. Foundation stones of this castle is from 9,034 years ago. It's this castle is the winter house for Ra and Maya, the king and the queen. The towers were knocked down by the Catholics. They came and they just 
destroyed this castle in 1050. And this is when Ra and Maya, this is when they went into exile up to this little castle Kayani that we just came from. The name for this castle is called Ra Se Puri. Ra is the king, Ras is the race, Se is the sea, and Puri is our family trees. Our Pu means tree, Ri means again and again, so you can read the tree of your family in the race of human beings. Lina means line, so it's the line of Ra. And this castle we're looking at here, this foundation stone are from 9,034 years ago. This is the oldest castle on the planet. In the east we have Palas, palace, and in the west we have Castel, or castle as we see it today. This is the winter home for Ra and Maya, the king and the queen. The king, he represents the moon. In Bon language, Ku means the moon, and As means the As people. So he is called Kuning As. Tar means female. Moon is the moon. Maya, she also represents the Ku, the moon. She's called Kuning Atar. This castle was once in one lake. In this fine day, this castle was covered with white chalk. So it was one white castle. And the reflection in the lake, when you came up on, to Rastapuri, it was a white castle reflecting in the water with white swans swimming around and around. They had one system. This is what we would call the court of the Asur. And Asur are the highest family on the planet. And this Asur had one giving system. This place is in a place called Tuna before Tuna Stad. Today, Snapper Tuna. And you could offer for Tuna where our word fortune comes from, fortuna. And two is two, and na is knowledge. You could offer for the knowledge of the two people, which is the king and the queen. The people of this planet very much appreciated this king and queen. And this whole ball was represented in ringlands, more than 2,000 ringlands, with Jarl, Carl, and Trail people living in each ringland. And every 50 years was one heir of Ra one pair e ud and in this 50 years we were making beautiful beautiful handicraft on the planet made from gold because gold belongs to the sun gold never tarnishes and stones beautiful stones and they had no value because gold had no value except that you could make beautiful artifacts beautiful handicraft from the gold and we call this in english we call it aesthetics in root language, we call it es ta tik. Es is the sun, ta is the take, and tik has to do with time. Tik tok, tik tok, mathematik, uh, antique, antiquity. So these beautiful handicrafts that were created on these different ringlands over the planet were sent up to this castle. They were sent to this court of the ah court this Asaner's court in one system called Ye Hov Va. Ye meaning to give. Ye, ye, yo, ye, ye, yes. Hov meaning the, the, the court itself, the castle itself is the hov, coming from the word hoof, which is the shape of one horseshoe, which is one of the symbols of Ra. The rose, the horseshoe, is a symbol for Ra. And every 50 years inside this castle become full of beautiful, beautiful handmade artifacts from a time we have no idea that humans even were in existence. And every 50 years would become a new Ra and Maya because the old king and the old queen, the new Kuning As, the new Kuning Atar, they would become old. They would become the old king and the old queen. And every 50 years became a new Ra and a new Maya in one line of race-making family. And in this period of time, this castle would become full of these beautiful aesthetic or aesthetics. And they had to take all this aesthetics or this aesthetic out from this castle and they had to store it somewhere because the next 
Jehovah system was coming, the next giving system to the whole of the Ark. And so they went about 30 kilometers to the east of Helsinki, which was the old name for hell. Hell was destroyed in 1050, which I'll come to in a minute. And there they had something called the Lemminkainen Temple, which was one small little temple which we will cover when we go to this place but it had one storehouse where they would store these eras these Jehovah systems in one time where each Ra and Maya would store those period that artwork and then the next was the next and the next and one over a million generations of this Bach family so you can think that's 50 million at least we say that the human race is from the paradise times. And the ice times has been 50 million, 10,000, 31 years since we had ice on the planet. And the paradise time was longer than the ice times. So the human race, according to the Bach Saga, is more than 100 million years old. When we lived in this planet, when it was completely tropical, there was no ice. Where we're standing now was tropical plants instead of arctic plants. This castle in the year 1050, or let's go to the year 1049, they came to the first pope called Leo IX from Saxon, from Germany, what we call Germany today. And this Leo IX had to do one system where they were trying to eliminate the old pagan dome of the planet. And so this Leo IX the Pope from 1049 to, I think, 1054, he organized one army from at the time called Helvetia, today called Switzerland. And he paid with gold from the Vatican 30,000 mercenary army to come up and kill everybody in the south of Finland because they had to destroy this hell because in their book they had just already written that hell was the worst place on the planet. Whereas the pagan people understood hell is, is the center of the pagan planet. So on July 24, year 1050, 30,000 army men hired by the Pope made one ring around hell, which is one ring land with one island in the very center, which we will do in another day. And they all came together and they killed everybody. They burned everything. They completely destroyed hell in the year 1050. They threw all the rocks down from the stones. The towers are gone except for the Wabel Tower, which is the big tower over there. But there was a King's Tower, Kuning As Tower, and a Kuning Atar Tower, Ra Tower, Maya Tower. And they threw the stones off and destroyed much of this castle as we know it today. And this is what filled in this lake here. If you went to dig inside this earth here, you would find the stones that they destroyed this. The Finnish government wants to put this thing at the 15th century or something, but the castle is actually 9,034 years old. And this is where the race of human beings, they came out from here. And this is the race of all human beings on this planet. We all come from this, this ringland here called Asgard or Hell, or Os Hell, or Midgard. Had many names, this, this land. Today we call it Uden Ma. And Uden is the sun, Uden is the ring, Uden is everything. Ma means the land, so it's the land of Uden. It's the sun land, which was surrounded by one sun going around and around in one circle, as the saga says. This pole here is the Maistan, the Maypole, where last month they had one where the girls, they go around with this, around. It's one ceremony for Maya, the queen. The word Maya is where the word maize, maize, the corn comes from. Maya, the Mayan Indians. and in Hindu, Maya means illusion. And it's where our word May comes from. The month of May comes from Maya. So my, in my, in May, is when they make the, the my stone, the maypole dance. It's in one honor of Maya, the queen. The king and the queen towers have been destroyed, so they don't have this anymore. 
And when they did come, they, they took the throne of this king and the footpall or the stool of the king. And it's buried just a few kilometers here in a place called Offerlunden, along with some other things, two golden statues, life-size golden statues, and three crystal balls, which are, one was from the paradise time, the paradise, the paradise. Pa is the papa, ra is his son, dis, d means to drink or to suck, and son is the son, so the pa and the ra, they d the sun, the paradis. Today they put some kind of roof over it so it doesn't become more and more destroyed. We hope one day we can restore this castle back to its... I think inside this Lemminkainen temple there will be one replica of what this castle looked like when it was actually built 9,034 years ago. tower here is called Ra Bell Tower. It had one shape of one bell for the top and the king Ra or Kuning As could stand in this tower and he could tell what he had to tell. Castel. You tell from the cos. One castel. So Ra he could tell the information. There was this lake everywhere where now his voice come across this lake so people all around a place called Tunastad, and the people could hear what Ra had to say. And I'm sure there was some system for Maya, but I, I don't know the system, but for every system of the male, there was also a system for the female. And Ra and Maya were brother sister. They didn't make children, either one of them. They were part of making the race of people, but they, they themselves, Maya was virgin, and her six sisters, called Hexa, they were also virgins. And the first 11 boys in this story Ra, the oldest, didn't make children. The twelfth son, who we would call the Bach or the Lemminkainen, he was the children maker of this highest family called Pyrrhet. P meaning one circle, Ru meaning peace, and Et meaning family. Here in this Finland today, the sound Piru means the devil for them. But it means the peace ring family. P Ru Et. It's called Ra Bell Tower. A long time ago, the people could look up to the sun, and they understood that the sun was the soul, the source of life. And so they could build one sun temple, which the Lemminkainen temple is one sun temple dedicated to the sun. And this castle is one moon castle dedicated to the moon because they felt like the sun was looking down with one smile to see that the people were appreciating the sun. And the moon also, the light side of the moon is the Ra, so the man in the moon is Ra. And the moon could look down on the people and see that the people were appreciating the moon. The idea of the, the religions put the God in the space looking down instead of the sun and the moon looking down. 
The sun has consciousness because it's creating everything. And the moon is part of the consciousness too because the moon is, is part of the whole system. The best friend of the moon is the sun. So Ra, his best friend is S, the sun, the Ras. So the sun and the moon have much to do with this whole system from before. The people appreciated the Ra and the sun, the moon and the sun. And Ra represent the moon, not the sun, as we think today, as the Egyptians said. The light side of the moon is the masculine side. And the dark side of the moon is the feminine. And the feminine doesn't mean, the dark doesn't mean negative in the story. The dark it just means the mystical side. So there's moon, moon stories. There's stories from the light side of the moon, and there's also stories from the dark side of the moon. Maybe the dark side of the moon stories are a little bit things to, to look out for in the light, to be aware of. The pagan people, they felt, they understood things much different than how we understand today. Today they want to say there's thousands, millions of suns, when there's really only one sun. And they want to say there's hundreds and hundreds of planets, where there's really only one planet. And they want to say many, many moons out there, where we say there's only one moon. Soul means one sun, muno means one moon, plan means plan, and et means one, there's one planet. And there's plants on this planet, Mars and Venus and Saturn, there are no plants. They're stars. They're called the morning star and the evening star. Today they have a little bit of problem to tell of what's the difference between the sun and a moon and a planet. One sun, one moon, one planet, and millions and millions of stars, which are reflections of the sun. They're not suns in themselves, according to sound system. angel I feel to take away but I won't do it but uh, Christian angel which uh, you or wouldn't really appreciate this angel being here but we I'll leave it here you were brought five boxes out here five I think oak boxes his father Canute his mother Rhea his sister Raquel 
his brother who was killed by Lenin, Raphael, and one more. He put these five wooden boxes when the ash tree was standing here. He put these underneath the roots of his ash tree. I think in 1985 or 84 or something, 86 maybe, I'm not sure what year he put these. And there's only one member of this family whose ash is not put here. And that was his great aunt, Christina Victoria Boxstrom, who is the sister of Knut Victor Boxstrom, who is the son of Carl Gustav Boxstrom. And this is where the ash of our friend, where it lays today. When joint here for our good friend. Big nose for you, buddy. Siva Shankari Alex Siva Boom for you. This land belonged to the Bach family. They gave it to the church, Snap the Tuna. There used to be a devil on top of that cross, up on the top, there's a wind. Now they've taken it down and put the symbol of tour up there. And that's the Snap the Tuna church. There was one tree here from the beginning of time called the Yugdra seal. And the Yugdra seal was the tree of all living humans and all living things on the planet. You see many, many depictions of this world tree and many, many different things. And where we stand here was where this tree was one ash tree. And the curator of this place, of this church, he cut the ash tree down in the late 80s. I actually stood with my arms on this tree at one time. These three grind trees, these three pine trees, they crowded out the tree and he cut the whole thing down. Every member of the Bach family, since Frey and Freya, the first two humans on this planet, their ash went underneath this tree. And Eeyore was the last member of this family. And on the 24 of 6, 2011, a group of people from all over the planet, we all met here to put our friend's ash here where this is today. So, that angel just killed him. Flat, flat disc is what she looks. 